I booked a plane flight with Arnold Aviation, and because I actually chartered the whole plane, my family was able to fly out to Thomas Creek with me. The majority of our work is flying supplies into a lot of the ranches, lodges, and stuff like that. Crew in and out, and then recreationists. When you came out, and you would express the interest that you wanted to go back in at some point and finish it. I think I had a flight into the area. This feels right to have my family here to experience what I'm experiencing and kind of feels more complete. Whoa. Hey, Mom, why? Judge, just look. Mom, why did she blow it? Chuck, Mom. I like the variation you get with it, even though, I mean, we're flying into the essentially the same airships, but there's a lot of them and you get a lot of, you meet a lot of different interesting people. I was home for about, oh, I think it's, it was about a week and a half. Just felt like it was incomplete, like I didn't complete this hike. Really glad my family got to fly out here. Just, it, it kind of involves them more. They can partake of the process see what it's like out here. It was just kind of an uneasiness that I felt when I was home. Um, because I didn't have it totally decided if I was gonna go back or not. And then it came to a point where I said, okay, I, I can finish this. I can finish this. And even if I don't want to because it's uncomfortable, I'm gonna do it. And that's when I made the decision to go back. So I felt like I was always trying to fight that feeling of, like, I left something unfinished that I started. And that felt kind of empty. So going back, starting at Thomas Creek all the way to the finish line, that's about 60 miles or so. And so I thought it would take me anywhere from five to six to seven days. As I hiked, I saw evidence of people who had once lived in the area long ago. I kept asking to myself, what were these people doing and what happened to them? soldiers were the first ones to mine that in World War II. You could get drafted by the military and serve your, your draft notice at the mine. That mine produced over 85% of all the tungsten and antimony used in World War II. That the United States of America probably would have lost World War II without that mine. You're never bothered by the Forest Service. They would help you out if you got into trouble. They'd bring groceries in for you if you needed it. The Forest Service, until uh, probably in the 1960s, it began to get a little different. He went from the 1930s, where there weren't many environmental laws, to the Forest Service showed up one day and said, everything here is going to be wilderness, and we're going to take your land away from you, and you no longer have the right to live somewhere as you've lived for over 60 years. Nobody wanted to be a forest ranger in Big Creek, because, you know, there were enough codgers around Big Creek, and they knew that they were not liked. And, and Jim, I was in the cabin, their cabin there, one time having dinner, and this guy knocks on the door, and it was a guy that was now the district ranger. He'd just been appointed. Or he says, I hear you don't like Forest Service people very much. And Jim says, by God, you got that right, sir. And he says, oh, okay, well, I just want to introduce myself. He says, well, fine, turn around and get in your car and get the hell out of here. And we just went, 
<laughs> so uh, that was the attitude. When the wilderness became wilderness in 1964, regulations then got printed, but they gave everybody a 20-year window to get used to this. And then the door would shut tight. the early 1970s. One of the gals that worked for the Forest Service in Big Creek employed a guy to go up and burn the cabins on the mine site. They paid a guy $100 to go up and torch all of the buildings that were there. She, she said, well, lightning struck. That was kind of funny because everything got piled up in one big pile. God was really looking after you. And then, well, hell, they just burned them right there. It's like they want absolutely no trace of any human being ever being on this planet before they showed up. And just piled it all up. And they left the outhouses. The golden rule cabin, they broke the golden rule. When they went up and burned the buildings, why, uh, uh, you know, he was pretty upset. Blue Bucket, Terry Placer, Shamrock 2, destroyed. I still had, you know, a hike of probably about 13 miles of the Middle Fork Trail. And then I landed to Loon Creek Airstrip. I made it to Loon Creek Ranch, and this is where I have to go meet up with Cash Creek Trailhead. And then from Loon Creek, I went up Cash Creek. Going up Cache Creek, it starts out, there is actually a trail the whole time. The snow is pretty cruddy. And then the storm started coming in. So it, it started snowing lightly every day from then on. So at the, the second half, it snowed five days straight of when I was out there. You can explore more with ski packing. You can go deeper with ski packing. You can experience places that not too many other people can experience. If you go and explore the Frank Church, you feel a sense of wild that you haven't felt anywhere else. Such, so big of wilderness. It's just unlike many places that we ever experience in civilization. It's kind of like a wonderland for people in Idaho. When I was hiking the ICT, it was just this mystery, like, where, where am I going to? I'm going to the Frank Church Wilderness. I have no idea what I'm entering. It was just a big mystery. And even when I did this hike, same thing, big mystery. What is my next day gonna be like? I don't know, <laughs> but I have to survive.
we all have a wild spirit within us. You get in touch with what you need when you're out in those wild places. And so you realize, I'm super fragile. Like you kind of realize all this stuff that goes into you surviving and you enjoying it out there uh, and you become appreciative of it. It's, it's just a balance between like my human fragility and the wild nature that is the untamed forest and you being a part of it. Um, it stretches you as a human being. You, you, in a sense, you become a, a different person.